Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Elementary OS 7.1. So let's get started. Now, Elementary OS has always been in a really good place for me. I started using it since four, quickly jumped over to five, and I used five and six for a very long time. And then seven is something I just glazed over. Now, I did do a video review on 7.0, and there was some issues that um, I kind of decided not to use uh, Elementary OS for. So now we are back with 7.1, and they've actually done a lot of improvements on this, especially with a lot of the bug fixes that they've done. But it did improve on a lot of stuff. Now, I am itching to jump back into this desktop so let's check it out now here we have the default wallpaper for 7 uh, I don't know if it's a 7.1 specific because I don't remember what 7 looked like I literally just used it for like maybe a couple of days and kind of jumped right over 7 but 7.1 is something I might want to stay with before I start running any applications what I want to do is just show you this is a fresh boot and I could probably show you guys what it is in the RAM usage using HTOP um, it's about 1 gig well, I can't even see it through this font. I think it's 1.030 out of 8 gigs, which is not too bad. I mean, it's a little bit heavier weight than uh, what I would consider, but it's actually pretty good. Now, I do like the fact that this is like no ordinary desktop that you would find like GNOME or anything. It's, it's their own. It's called Pantheon, and I really do like it. It reminds me a lot about Mac, but it's not really full Mac-isk. Like, it's, it's just slightly different, but it's got a very comfortable feel to it. And all the styling falls perfectly within Pantheon. So I'm going to glaze over some of the stuff that they have going on. Now, one of the quick things that I want to mention is that they have auto start working now. Um, I know all, most Linux do have auto start working, but you can actually just go into applications and add your own auto start applications here and you could check and uncheck them. They also have updated uh, housekeeping. So you could go to security, security and privacy and go over to housekeeping over here and check off what you want to disable or enable and automatically just delete the stuff that you want, uh, don't need. Especially like trash or old temporary files, you, after 30 days, it would just automatically delete. You could do that as well. Uh, displays now have like a new color. Now, one of the things that I do really like about this, which I have a friend who does have um, issues with his eyesight, and I, I did advertise him to use this because a lot of elementary OS is geared towards um, if you have an issue with eyesight and everything and they do have like different color schemes that will work out towards your favor. You see how everything's changing depending on how your eyesight is. And my friend loves this because he's able to actually see everything better. And a lot of the Linux distributions actually don't have this type of feature. And I know that they focus a lot on this. So I do really enjoy this. I mean, you can change a, uh, the entire color of your monitors, your grayscale if you wanted to. Like there's just so much uh, you can do with uh, vision impairment in um, elementary OS. Another thing to add it, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. I'm gonna open files and then I'll open another file. So is that two files open? Yes. Why didn't it tile? So if I hold tab, I can now choose the stuff that I want right over here. And I could use the arrow keys as well to navigate around. But if you do alt tilde, now it just moves through the files that that specific program. So if you got two files open, you could just choose the one that you need and it won't uh, parade you with all the other stuff like the alt tab does. So that's another little feature that they added. Um, something that I did find this very interesting is, oh, let me see if I could show you this. Uh, this is pretty cool too. Uh, one of the features I do like. I'm going to open terminal. Okay. And then I'm going to jump over to downloads over here. And I'm going to touch a file and I'm going to name this Nova 1. Then I'm going to do this Nova 2, Nova 3, Nova 4, Nova 5. So I have five files over here that's just called Nova. Now, the new thing that they did is if you go over here and highlight all the files, you can now do bulk renaming. And now it actually pops up this little menu that you can add a prefix, add suffix, and then like figure out how you want the name to be. So if I'm going to add a prefix and I'm going to add, say, a number sequence, now it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Nova 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, you know what? I could replace. So instead of Nova, I could do Nova 2. And we'll rename all the stuff and then I'll add a suffix of number. So it'll be Nova 1, 2, like that. That's like, there's so much you could do with this bulk renaming, especially if you handle a lot of media content and you need to bulk rename all the f images or uh, video files and stuff like that. You can do that. And I actually will be using this feature a lot. I do this on my desktop with another 
program just to rename files, but if it comes natively in this file manager, why not? I could just rename all my video files all in one shot. So I, I really do like this. The file browser also has uh, little new features over here with, um, I could zoom in, zoom out. And if I say deleted these files because I don't want them, I go back and then hit the undo and it'll come back. Like there's, the file manager I think took the biggest upgrade of all because there was a lot of these new little nifty features that they added in. And they still retain picture to picture. If you ever use this for picture in picture, um, it's very good. Um, this is one of my favorite features of elementary OS is that I could use Windows key F and then uh, picture in picture that, Windows key F, picture in picture this. And then now if I open another window, I could still see what's going on in that. So if I wanted to do sudo app install C matrix and then run C matrix. And then if I get out of this program, bam, my picture in picture is still here. Or if I have a media file that I'm running, I could just do the same thing. And then if this takes over again, it hide that picture in picture. One of my favorite features, actually, I don't think any other operating system has a feature like this. So yes, I really do uh, like this. Now, uh, the big bulk of this um, they did change is the notification center over here and the uh, app center. So let's check out what we got going on over here. First, we this stayed the same. That didn't really change as far as like login, log off, suspend and stuff like that. But the notifications did change over here and it got bigger. Um, it's easier to read and it doesn't bother you as much. And there's like sections as the more notification comes down that the notifications will start to shrink down. So that's really cool. The power feature, I, I, I just have this because I have my keyboard and mouse. This is another thing that I really, really like, the network feature. So you now have airplane mode over here. You have your ethernet. If you have Wi-Fi, it will show up Wi-Fi over here as well. But if you got your uh, VPNs, it'll actually come up as a circle icon down here as well. And you can actually activate multiple VPNs at one time. So say if I have PIA US right now, I'll enable it. There, I'm logged in, everything's all good. And if I was to run a new file browser right over here and do if config.co, there's the IP address for 191. This is not my IP address, this is from the VPN. So if I was to disable this and then go over to UK, there it's logged in. I should be able to just refresh the site. Well, the IP address, I, I don't think it changed, but it does say country United Kingdom now. So it is UK. For some reason, it's being a little bit odd. Let me see if I could refresh again to get an IP. Uh, kind of still the same IP. Or maybe it did change, I, I, I can't remember. But yes, you can now activate multiple VPNs or one at a time. And if you have multiple collections over here, it'll just stay here like little bubbles. So I do like that little feature. Audio, they did make these icons circular instead of what it was before. So it looks a little bit better according to the entire theme of everything. Like these are all circle as well. Next up, we have our App Center. So the App Center really didn't change too much other than the fact that uh, side loading now works with Flatpak. So I do have an application, Firefox, that I installed from um, side loading uh, a Flatpak image. And you could see it doesn't say free over here because it's already pre-installed. And I didn't get it from the library. I got it from Flatpak. So I can just open this if I want to. And if I need to, what I can do is head over to Flathub. And no, unfortunately, you still can't search with their app center to search for Flatpak. But what you can do is just head over to Flathub. And from here, you can head over to their website and download whatever software that you need. So say if I needed to use um, FlatSeal. Anytime you're using FlatHub, always install FlatSeal. FlatSeal is a, a permission program for flat hubs or flat uh, software. And I'm gonna hit install. It won't really install, but it will download the image that I need. I'm gonna open that and you see, and then right click on that and you can see open sideload. I can just hit enter, it'll do it itself. Now this will ask you if it's a trusted installed app, just install anyway. Back then it used to be, no, you have to decline or something. It was a weird message. But now um, I could trust this, I understand, install anyway, and it'll download whatever it needs. It, I can't believe this program is about one gig. I actually never knew FlatSeal was about one gig storage. Once you're done, it'll actually ask you if you wanna move this to the trash, which you can because you're not gonna be using it anymore. And then you could open app. Now I delete it from my downloads folder and I could open FlatSeal. And there we have it. 
These are all the applications that are installed through Flatpak, which camera is. I know their web browser was, their video was as well. And these are all the applications that are natively installed. Like I didn't install this other than Firefox, everything came um, default. And these are all the applications that are pre-installed with Firefox, which I do like. Like their known project on their, because they're using Ubuntu 22.04, uh, I think their uh, web browser was only on 43. And because they're using Flatpak now, they could now get the latest version. So they get all the improvements with the new Ep Epiphany updates, especially when uh, the new GNOME browser allows you to shrink the browser and it'll actually turn into like a mobile version. That's like a new thing that was added to uh, the GNOME project's uh, web browser. But yeah, other than that, um, everything seems to be working. I didn't run into any problems whatsoever like I did on the last review. There are some things I didn't, uh, you know what? I didn't glaze over the mail app that they updated. Now they have this new update where you can use this and insert images in line. So let me see if I could try that right now. Um, let's download an image. So I'm just gonna grab this, save image as, and I'm gonna save it into my downloads. And supposedly now this very lightweight, um, email client could okay that didn't do it how do i insert unicode no new messages i thought i could just inline the image like this let's see oh yeah okay there you go you can't just drag it over like normal like outlook or something but you can just uh add this into here that's the only thing that i think they really updated and the ability to add signatures so i could go here and edit signatures if i had one and then add the signature but I haven't actually really used this mail client before and I do want to play around with it because mail is a big part of what I do. Um, I just don't really use, I, I'm so used to using just a browser for emails, but I should actually start using applications. Well, that is it for me. I really do like the updates for elementary OS 7.1 and I might just install that on my main PC over here instead of Debian. Uh, as much as I love Debian and Debian's really good right now, uh, I really do like the look and feel of elementary OS and um, how everything is just, it just looks so good together. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. Everything we talk about will be linked down in the description as well. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.